Hey, everybody, welcome back to the Time Pass podcast. This is your host, Ashika. Thank you so much for tuning in today, you guys. If you haven't done so already, please like me on Facebook at Time Pass Podcast. Follow me on Instagram at Time Pass underscore podcast. Check out my YouTube channel. It is in my link tree and on the website, timepasspodcast.com. And make sure that you are following, subscribing, and liking the podcast on your listening platform of choice. Real quick today, today, you guys, I want to talk about Vedic astrology versus Western astrology. I've, I've done an episode on astrology, tarot, and um, psychics, oh my. So I feel like if you are a listener of the show or if you've never listened before, I'm telling you now that I'm super into astrology. And um, I have a background in this because South Asians... I feel like, especially our parents, we're really into astrology, especially when it comes time for marriage, right? You want to make sure that the female's astrology aligns up with the male's astrology. And I remember when I was getting married, even though my husband was not South Asian, um, they still did that. My mom still did that to see if we would be a good match. So it's super important. It's something that um, it's kind of historical. And that's been in, in my upbringing, at least since I was a child. Um, which is probably why I'm obsessed with astrology. But I have a guest with me here today. I have Nirja here with me. She is the Sri Lankan American founder of the, the app Love Digits, an Indian astrology compatibility app. Um, she's actually in Sri Lanka right now. We're recording this <laughs> podcast um, internationally. She's got three kids and two dogs, and she's kind of lived all over. And um, welcome to the show, Ninja. Thank you so much for joining me. Hey, thank you, Ashika. Really, really excited to be here and talking to you about um, all my fun stuff, but all the fun <laughs> stuff I like to talk about. <laughs> yes, yes. And so I, um, Ninja and I kind of met on social media, and um, she told me about her app, Love Digits, and it is um, an astrological kind of match based app, but it's based more on Vedic astrology versus Western astrology. Um, Western astrology being what we all grew up with the zodiacs, the 12 here in the States. That's kind of what we learned. So, Ninja, you're kind of the expert in this field. Um, explain to us the difference, like the overall, like big difference between Vedic astrology and Western astrology. Sure, Ashika. I, I'm not an expert and I'm not an astrologer. I just am passionate about it. Um, but yeah, it, it, just to give a high level, um, there's a lot of differences between Vedic astrology and uh, Western astrology. But I think uh, just to touch upon a couple, the main uh, two I would say are that um, Vedic astrology is based on um, the Vedas, the ancient Hindu scriptures like the Bhagavad Gita, the Mahabharata, and it's considered to be uh, over 3,500 years old. Right? So it's, wow. it's been around. Uh, Western astrology is based, has its roots in Egyptian and um, Greek civilization. So on a grander scheme of things, I mean, these are all ancient philosophies, but it's relatively newer, right? Compared to the, the Hindu um, scriptures. Um, then the other one is more technical. It's the, the starting points of the two systems, right? So Vedic astrology um, is based on the sidereal um, zodiac, which essentially is um, how, where you start considering the first zodiac. So Aries being the first one is aligned with the constellations. We, we look at, in Vedic astrology, you look at the 27 constellations or stars, or you call in, in Sanskrit nakshatras, right? Um, and so the first star, uh, first zodiac is Aries, and the first star in the constellation is Ashwini. So you'd say Ashwini Nakshatra. And those are the starting points, right? Um, in Western astrology, it's based on the tropical uh, zodiac, and there the the starting point is um, the point in space that the sun passes the equator is considered the beginning of the zodiac, and that's Aries. So, I mean, to summarize, Vedic astrology is about the stars uh, as the starting point. And stars in, in Indian astrology or Vedic astrology is also the moon, the constellation, the moon. So the difference is Western is more um, sun-based and Indian is more moon-based. 
That's so interesting. You know, I I've actually never knew that until you and I met and you <laughs> told me, I mean, even growing up, um, you know, getting my Vedic astrology done, um, no one ever really quite explains it to you. You just know, because I was just raised like that. It's just something that I know. It's like something that I do, but I never really actually knew what the differences were. Now, earlier, I was kind of talking about how, you know, our parents, my parents, we grew up with very much like, you know, what's your Rashi? Like you want to see um, when you're marrying someone in particular that the, that the couple, male, female, whatever it is, that they're compatible. And so this is something that families do sometimes before they even agree to the marriage. Um, do you believe in the accuracy of the Vedic matches? I mean, this probably a, a dumb question for you since you have a whole <laughs> app about it. But um, I'd like to I'd like to get your point of view on it. No, of course. Um, absolutely. I do believe in it. I, I believe. So given that Vedic astrology is more moon based as opposed to sun based, um, the sun changes signs, um, you know, Western or even the Indian sun signs change every um, like approximately every month. Right. Uh, it's 30 days. The sun change. The sun changes signs, whereas the moon changes sign almost every two days. Wow. So and that. And, you know, so b uh, predictions based on moon uh, are viewed as being closer and more accurate since our moods and circumstances change more frequently, right? So, uh, and also the, the moon reflects the mind, um, emotions, temperaments, and interpreting the moon's placement leads to more relevant uh, predictions and analysis, I think. I mean, this is just my hypothesis on this, but. <laughs> yeah, okay, good, good, good. So let's, let's get to the meat of this. Tell me about love digits. Um, like what was the inspiration behind creating it? What's, what is love digits? What is the love Div digits app? Pretend like I haven't used it. Cause we all know. I <laughs> No worries. So, I mean, the reason I came up with it, um, many months ago while I was dating, uh, I met my now husband and as with everybody else from the South Asian uh, culture right if you're really into astrology you would want to check your compatibility and this is what I did so I started dating him and um, he's not from the, the Hindu or South Asian background but I still wanted to check our compatibility and um, at that point I I only knew to send it to my mom to check with the the family pundit or whoever to check the the compatibility and so I did that of course I didn't tell her you know, his background, I just said, he is the date of birth, the time of birth, place of birth. And um, interestingly, I didn't know too much about the astrology that much, Indian astrology specifically. And so the local astrologer, when he was drawing up um, my husband Javier's chart, um, you know, Indian astrology is so precise, right? You need to have the exact time of birth, place of birth, and all that calculation goes into creating your birth chart, which is essentially the map of the sky, the minute you were born. So Sri Lanka, they, they don't have daylight saving uh, time. So we this particular astrologer back then didn't take that into account when he was creating the birth chart. And so the, the compatibility was off because the birth chart was off. And of course, I didn't know any better. So I was like, oh, okay, it's not going to work. And I, I broke up with my <laughs> boyfriend at that time. <laughs> I can't believe you actually went through with a full breakup. Honestly, well, I probably would have been very sad as well. No, I was sad, but I was like, okay, if, and I really, really believe in astrology. So I was like, you know, if this is what it's, it is, I don't want to go through it and we'll figure it out. I was also young. So I was like, ah, there's many other people. Um, and so I continued to date and I was on these dating sites. My, uh, Javier, my husband, of course, didn't give up. So we kept meeting up and getting back together, breaking up. But in between we, and he was also traveling internationally. So there was periods where he wasn't around for like months. Um, and I was on these dating apps and so you, the dating apps lets you filter um, based on, you know, location, height, all these, I mean, important things, but they're somewhat superficial, right? Um, and I always thought, I wish there was a way to filter by astrology compatibility, and especially Indian astrology compatibility. Um, if you wanted to check your compatibility, you have to go online or get in touch with a live astrologer to do it. And it's just time consuming. And you can't be doing that for every person you see on the, you know, on the dating app, right? Um, so that was something I know. And my girlfriends and I always thought, you know, that would be a really cool tool to have. 
and eventually that's what I did. I I paired up with a, a, an astrologer who was part of, I don't know if Ashika, I think I told you this, um, the, the hugging saint, Amritanandamai, she comes to, to the US, she goes to Europe, she does these big tours, you know, there's 10,000 people that come through for a hug at, in New York, at least at the Javits Center. And Prasannan, her astrologer, her lead astrologer at that time, and I've, I've known, I was part of the organization, I used to volunteer. And um, so I was telling him about it and he said, yeah, I mean, the majority of people that come to me want come up because of some love related, relationship related question. And, and I can't answer everybody because I'm not available all the time and I'm on tours or whatever. And this would be a really neat thing to do. So we, we got together and it's his algorithm the compatibility algorithm, because it's a little unique, right? The traditional Jyotish or traditional Kundali uh, matchmaking is like a 36 point system or something like that. And it's very, um, not that it's old school, it's different, right? Whereas Prasannan, he's, he's a, you know, he's a Jewish accountant from uh, Vancouver, but moved to India, lived in India for like almost 20 years. And um, he's got a mix of more modern and Indian uh, ancient, uh, and he, brought both those together and he he made it more practical and um, a little bit more relatable, the, the, the way he did the compatibility analysis. And that's kind of what we brought out in this app. Wow. Um, so, and I think now, I mean, like you said, a lot of people are into astrology, but it's all Western astrology because that's just what we see in the magazines and, you know, the news, even like uh, all the reality shows, they talk about your uh, Western sun sign, right? And that's just what we all know. So, um, but I'm hoping that there is a little bit of a trend towards um, Eastern philosophies. Now yoga and meditations is seeing a big growth trend. And I think Indian astrology, uh, which is Vedic astrology, Vedic numerology will also be part of this trend. And that's what we're trying to bring out with um, our app, Love Digits. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um... Now, like I said, I have personally tried your app <laughs> and I have to say it was fun. It was a lot of fun. Um, once I put all my data in, which you mentioned, you need to have your, um, your name, your location of birth and your exact time of birth. Um, and I put all that in and it gave me a bunch of information. <laughs> I was a little overwhelmed by all the information. Can you explain to us what each little thing is? that um that we get when we plug in all of our uh, bio data so to say into your app yeah sure i mean i just want to touch upon um the date the time of birth is very important right so if you don't know your time of birth you can still put in 12 noon but um it might not be as accurate because uh, like for instance the ascendant it changes every two two and a half hours or sorry every two and a half days so things like that might not be um as accurate if you, if you don't have the exact time of birth but yeah so the um <laughs> sorry if it's overwhelming but that we wanted what we wanted to do was give you like an astrology profile or your personality right and that's what you get the minute you put all of that in overwhelming in a good way because you're talking to an astrology nerd I was kind of I was shocked I was surprised that I was getting so much information so sorry to interrupt but I just wanted to be clear that I was pleasantly overwhelmed um, <laughs> okay okay no so absolutely you're you were talking about people the like part. to know about themselves right everyone wants to know more about themselves so what what the universe is saying about you right and that's essentially what this is this is not something you can like you know in dating apps you have your profile and it's what you want to project and you you know you write flowery language describing yourself try to be witty try to you know say all the right cool things but this is not that this is just your information you cannot change this is your date of birth your time of birth your place of birth and then we tell you what your personality traits are based on that, right? So um, what we do in the profile section is it, it's the birth chart we give you, which is essentially the map of the sky. And without that, we can't do anything else. So that's just given um, your nakshatra, which is predominantly what Vedic astrology is mostly about, your moon, the, the, the star that the moon is passing through when you were born. Um, the moon is associated, like I said, with your emotions, feelings, unlike the sun, which is more connected with your actions and, um, you know, your actions. Um, then we also do the ascendant, which is the rising sign, and that's your social personality. So we tell you what, you know, we don't, we don't give too much information. It's just fun, kind of light touch, uh, your personality. Um, the sun sign, we give you both your Indian 
and your Western, just so you can compare the two, right? Um, and then we do this fun thing with the numerology, Vedic numerology, which I don't know if you're familiar, but um, you know, birth Not number really. is essentially. <laughs> Not really. Not really. Not really. Um, so the birth number is the day you were born. So if you you were born on the thirtieth, your your birth number is three. Three plus zero is three, uh, and that you know, it, it determines your individu individuality and personality based on the day you were born. And um, life path number is um, a sum of your birth date. So the, the, uh, the day, the month, the year, it combines everything. And that number influences the course of your life and your destiny. And it represents your, um, who you are at birth and the native traits that will carry with you through your life. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, it was definitely mind blowing. I was super into it. And of course, right after I put my info in and got my sort of info, what did I do? The last person I dated, I put his birthday. <laughs> I put his birthday information in because that's the point of the app, right? You put your stuff in. And then if you know your partner stuff, you put their stuff in. Um, and it was very interesting because the last person I dated actually, and I didn't know his birth time. That's a little awkward. I feel like when you're first starting to date someone, especially if you're South Asian, the boys know what you're doing. They know oh, yeah. exactly oh, yeah. what you're doing. There's no <laughs> getting <laughs> that over on them. Yeah. So I did not actually know his birth time, but I did know his birth date and year um, and kind of guessed at his place of birth based on conversations we had had. So I put it in and like, Pleasantly, we were a pretty good match. Um, and then I wanted to test it. So I put in my ex-husband's information. Right, right, right. right. Um, and I actually have all his info because, you know, we were married. And it actually came up that we weren't a good match. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> um, but that's really fun because now when you date somebody, especially for um, males and females who are very into Vedic astrology and knowing all this, it's kind of nice because especially for me, when I date someone first date, I'm always asking them what, when, when were you born? And they're like, <laughs> Oh, and the minute I ask that even here, like the minute I ask that they're like, Oh, you're into astrology. Aren't you? Please don't start that with me. <laughs> and I'm like, no, no, no. Just, just tell me, tell, tell me when you were born. I don't even <laughs> ask them what's their sign because I feel like they like roll their eyes and they're like, here we go with her. But, um, I'm super into it, but I think it's a, it's a neat way once you have that information and you're kind of starting to like somebody a little more seriously to see, like, just to see, like, is no, that absolutely. I, I, I agree with you. And I, and I, you know, just to touch upon something else you said, if you don't know the person's time of birth, then I think it's a little creepy to ask somebody where you born right <laughs> off. I mean, they will walk off. Um, but you could, if you know your, the, birth date right when uh, just the general month and date that's enough because you can play around with the time you can just put in different times into the app you can try 6 a.m you can try 12 noon you can try 4 in the afternoon or midnight whatever and then see what it drastically changes your compatibility um so that's a that's a nice way not to uh, scare off the guys uh, or girls uh <laughs> but um yeah and, you know it's it's a nice tool to have you know, I want to emphasize astrology, you shouldn't take it that like, oh my God, die hardly. And I think there are so many other things that come into play, right? I mean, you have to meet the person, there has to be this other chemistry. And Vedic astrology, my app doesn't do it. But if you talk to an actual a qualified, you know, reputable astrologer, they also look into things like past life karma, and all these other things that play into it, right? So even if you're not, you know, uh, you don't have the greatest compatibility. There are some things that bring people together. And if you know the, the positives and the negatives, and if you're aware of the strengths and weaknesses in a compatibility or relationship, and you really want to make it work, you can still make it work, right? So that's kind of also what we were trying to get across with this app. It's not like how I did it, I just cut it off. It's more, okay, this is, these are the areas that, you know, needs a little bit more help. And if you really, if there's a real karmic connection or you really like the person, you will somehow end up with them. And that's kind of sort of what happened to me, right? I kept breaking up, but we ended up getting back and now we're married and have three kids and then moved three continents with this man. So yes. <laughs> I think you're in it for the long haul. <laughs> and the two dogs. <laughs> right? 
he doesn't even like dogs and we like <laughs> rescued two dogs in Kenya I mean it's ridiculous but anyways <laughs> <laughs> travel your travel and living in different continents I'm super jealous of uh, that's a whole other <laughs> offline conversation but okay um tell me about the idea behind the celebrity matches because I have to tell you that was so much fun so literally I tried out like the last person I dated and then my ex-husband and then I was like what's this celebrity match thing let me tell it's so much fun like what gave you the idea to do that? It's hilarious. No, I mean, we all have a celebrity crush and it's just this uh, fantasy world you go into, right? You're like, oh, what if? Um, and that's kind of what we were playing into. And also it was a nice way of showing our app. So say you, you come on and you don't actually have somebody you want to check your compatibility with. You can play around with the celebrities and you understand the amount of detail we give and how we kind of break it down. So it was almost a, you know, showing the user what the app is all about, but also in a fun way with your celebrity crush. Yeah. I have to tell you that I matched like 86% with Shahid Kapoor. And I was like, okay, okay. I was like, <laughs> of course the person that I match super high with, I'm not really that attracted to him. <laughs> just like in real life right it's like the people that are good for us we're kind of like ah not you though <laughs> <laughs> well, well we're hoping you find someone that is more compatible and more in line with you know uh, yeah. your interests sooner <laughs> rather than later <laughs> absolutely absolutely okay so tell tell everybody where we can get the app where can we download it how's it going yeah, sure. So um, currently, we're beta launch the app in India because um, I just wanted to try it out. Um, it's available on the Android and App Store, uh, Google Play and uh, the App Store. Uh, we have done really well in about four, four and a half months of us uh, having beta launched. We have over 225,000 people that have installed the app and are using it actively. Uh, in fact, some of the feedback we've gotten is that people check their compatibility and they, they know it's a it's a quick summary, right? And then they want to get more details. So they're like, ooh, we want to speak to a live astrologer now. <laughs> hey. And so that's something we're trying to work on, um, getting a platform where we can actually connect with astrologers um, so that, you know, if you have a pressing question or you want to find out more details as to why you got whatever score, whatever areas that you kind of um, want to look into more deep dive into, you could do that. But I mean, the, 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 the whole idea, I'm not trying to be a standalone app. I, I, we, do, we have an API and what we want to do is try to integrate it into existing larger uh, dating platforms or matchmakers to use it um, you know, behind the scenes because that's kind of the, I really want it to be helpful to people. And um, the, the bigger the platform that we can get it into, plug it into, the better that's that's kind of amazing and it's super smart and just to rewind real quick did you say two hundred and twenty-five thousand people have downloaded it already yeah yeah I mean, and in india, and it, it's funny i didn't think it would the traction would be that good but also because even in india which is surprising right um everybody follows western astrology so it was almost like i'm going through this education re-educating people about Indian astrology what, with this app in a way um, yeah. through our marketing and our influencer campaigns and things like that. Wow. So you, um, so it, you beta launched it in India, but I had no issue downloading it off the Apple app store here. So oh, no, it's, essentially it's, it's, it's available. available globally. It's available yeah. globally. It's a free app where we're trying to prove, uh, do a, like a proof of concept essentially. Right. And then we will, we'll take it to the different dating apps and, um, even like the social networking platforms, um, these gaming platforms where, almost everything now. I mean, look at Clubhouse now. That is pretty much like a dating a place where you go and meet people, right? Yeah, absolutely. Everything absolutely. has become a dating platform, essentially. <laughs> I, I think if you can meet people in one way or another, people are going to find a way to make it a dating app. <laughs> pretty much. And do, the people do that even on LinkedIn. I get hit on, on LinkedIn even now. <laughs> See, I, I'm See? telling you, I'm telling you. Um, you know, you kind of talked about this earlier, but I do you think that Vedic astrology is going to take off here? I mean, you mentioned it like yoga's taken off, meditation, the principles of manifestation. People don't realize it actually comes from Hinduism. Um, yeah. Do you think that Vedic astrology is going to see its see its day here in uh, a Western society? 
really do hope so. And I think it's happening. Um, there is a wave of people that are both in the West and the East that are essentially embracing or re-embracing these Eastern, ancient Eastern philosophies, right? And Vedic astrology is like the third leg of the stool um, in, this, in this Eastern philosophy. So alongside yoga and meditation, which have, um, which have seen phenomenal growth, growth trends in the last couple of years. So I think it's just a matter of time. Um, this will become pretty much mainstream as well. Yeah. I mean, look, back then, aerobics was bigger than yoga, right? People would do, and now it's the other way around. Yeah. Everyone yeah. knows yoga and they, they not that, uh, you know, Pilates and all of these other uh, types of exercise are also equally popular, but it's just people are more aware of it and more people are doing it. Yeah, absolutely. That meditation is huge. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I don't know. I'm just kind of thinking about my final thoughts here on Vedic astrology. I think, I think it's really cool. I think that it is definitely just learning more about it um, through conversations with astrologers and with you. It's just, it feels like it's more precise. Like you were saying, it's a little bit more precise. And the funny thing that I think a lot of people don't realize is sometimes quite often in Vedic astrology, your Vedic sun sign will not match your Western sun sign. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, more often than less, uh, yeah. you would have a different sun sign. You would have a different ascendant because the starting points of the two systems are different. So it's not off by a lot, but you might be, you, you, it's essentially one is a little behind the other. So, you know, if you're a, a Scorpio in one uh, or a Sagittarius in one, you might be a Scorpio in, in, in Vedic. Yeah. And that throws people off and they see that because you've just grown up knowing, no, I'm a Scorpio, uh, I'm a Sagittarius. How on earth are you telling me? And I really identify with this. I've, you know, been following this for so long and now you're telling me I'm something else. So it's a, it's a mindset thing. And, you know, and that's why we put both the Indian sun sign and the Western. So you can see for yourself, you know, which one kind of um, you identify more with. Yeah. Um, and so like when you read your uh, horoscopes on magazines and things, you can read both and see which one makes more sense to you. Oh, that's smart. I would have <laughs> to say just because I, I grew up going to uh, a, a Jyotish, an astrologer, my entire life, basically, um, I would have to say I am a true Libra, both <laughs> okay. Western and Vedic. So uh, I, I'm, I'm very much a Libra at heart. I really am. I think, I mean, I think the app's really fun. I think it's great. Thank I think, you. You're welcome. Yeah, I think people should really try it out. And I really love the idea. It's just something else like people, I mean, I'm single. I've been single for four years. We need all the tools in our arsenal that we can get. And so I think it's really smart. I mean, I love it as a standalone app. But I think if um, it does end up getting integrated, it will be so amazing. And I think people should definitely check it out. It's um, obviously astrology is something that I'm passionate about and just have always been super interested in. So I really appreciate you coming on the show and um, telling me and exposing me to your app. I think it's going to do amazing. And I really- okay. think, Fingers crossed. <laughs> yes. And I really think people should check it out. It's called Love Digits. I will make sure to put all of your social media handles um, your Instagram, everything in the show notes on the website at timepasspodcast.com. Um, but your website is lovedigits.com. And you do have a Facebook, Love Digits India, and your Instagram at Love Digits India, right? Yes, is there, yes. Is there anything you have to kind of say just to kind of wrap up the episode? Uh, not really. I mean, it's just that, um, you know, when you were saying if it gets integrated, even if you don't believe in astrology, it's just another one more tool that you have, right? And like you said, we can use all the tools, all the arsenal that we can <laughs> in our little toolbox. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, all the way from Sri Lanka. Um, real quick, you guys, uh, if you haven't done so already, please follow me on Instagram at timepass underscore podcast. Like me on Facebook at timepass podcast. And please visit the website for the show notes. I will have all the information about Love Digits and Ninja up on the website on the show notes, timepasspodcast.com. Um, at this point in time, I'm going to do my usual plea of the week and ask you guys to please reach out, give me some feedback on the show. 
uh, shoot me an email off the website or directly timepasspodcast at gmail.com. And uh, let me know what you think. Let me know what you want to hear. If you have any questions, please feel free to shoot those my way as well. All right, you guys, whatever you do, whether you're checking out Vedic astrology, you're into Western astrology, remember what I say, stay authentic, and I will see you next time. Bye.